Welcome back, everybody. Here we go. Quick run through of all the answers for the 2 1 to 2 3 quiz review. All right. Um, remember, for relative frequency, I want to find the total number first. Well, actually, it might be easier to do cumulative frequency um, because I need the uh, cumulative frequency for the relative frequency. Uh, cumulative frequency. Oh, that's not a pen. Cumulative frequency is 5, 8, 11, 14, 16. Did you guys get 17? Yeah, add them up. Right. All right, relative. So now I want to go out of 17. Five out of 17. I'm okay if you write it. That's a seven. I'm okay if you write it as a decimal or a percent. I really don't care. I'm going to say 0.29. I'll go 0.294. Why not? I really don't care where you round to. I, I like to go three out because then it gives me like a 29.4 if I wanted to say that as well. Uh, three out of 17, and this is all three of those categories, 17.6, 0 0.176, 0 0.176, 0 0.176. That's nice and convenient there. Two out of 17 gives me 11.8, 0.118. One out of 17 gets me 0.05. Nine. Good there? Yeah. Remember, relative is just the percentage out of the whole. Cumulative is adding up all as you, as you go. All right, let's talk about the frequency polygon that we have. Uh, remember, frequency polygon is kind of like the, it's showing you the midpoints, right? Remember, frequency polygon is showing you the midpoints. Approximately how many basketball players were studied? So I need to find cumulative frequency here, right? Um, so that means there was zero here, looks like six here, uh, looks like 10 here, looks like 22 here, looks like 24 there, looks like uh, 16 here, looks like uh, 20 here, mm, is that two? Yeah, two there and then zero there. So let's add all those together. Um, that gives me a six plus 10 is 16 plus 22 and 24 make 46, and then 20 and 16 make 36, and then two more. Look at that, right on 100. Which class is the largest frequency? Please give the upper and lower class limits. Okay, it's, I mean, it's pretty easy to see that this is this class, right? But what are my limits? What are my limits? Well, you can kind of have a variety of different answers here, but... Here's the deal. You can't say like 78 to 81 or 75 to, 8, 75 to 8, 78. You can't say that because 78 is the midpoint of the class with the highest frequency. So you want to say um, 77 to 79. That would be fine. You want to say um, 70, what would it be like 76.5 to 79.5. That would be fine. Just give me a class with the midpoint as 78. It would not be okay to say like um, 75 to 81. That's not okay because all of the classes need to have the same width, right? So what would the class below it be? You couldn't you could, you could have the width of six for class below it. So what I would need to do is say, okay, um, I think the best answer here is 76 to 79 because then the next class below it, if this is 76, this could go, or sorry, not 76 to 79, 77 to 79. And then, so this class would, could be 76 to 74. And this one is 73 to 71. See, you follow me there? So you got to have to kind of work it, work to see using those points on there, knowing that they're the midpoints, figure out some class widths that would be approximately correct. So in this case, I'll say 77 to 79. Which class is a cumulative frequency of about 16? Okay, it's this class, right? It's the 6 and the 10 to get to 16. Don't say six, Don't say this class up here. No, that's that's total. That's just frequency, not cumulative frequency. It's this class right here. So it's the um, 71 to 73. 71 to 73. Follow me there? All right, your grades in English along with the weights are as follows. Find your final score for the course. Remember the um, 
a weighted mean is sum of x w divided by sum of the w's also this is the first assessment that you will be getting these fancy dancy um uh these fancy dancy uh formula sheets um i don't know if you use them but you get them a little security blanket but that's on here sum of x w over sum of w um the nice thing here is that the sum of the w is just um a hundred or one however you uh, run the numbers there. Okay, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here. Let's find uh, XW. Because this is X and this is W. Uh, I'm going to use um, W as a decimal. The weights as a decimal. So I'm going to have 72 times 0 0.12. 8.64. Uh, I'm going to take 75 times... 13.5. I'm going to take 80 times 0.2, which is 16. I'm going to take 65 times 0.15, which is 9.75. And then we have 70 times 0.35, which gets me 24 and a half. Okay, so all said and done, sum of XW is going to be we got 8.64 plus 13.5 plus 16 plus 9.75 plus uh, 24.5. Let's see if I missed 8.64, 13 .5, 16, 9 .7, 9 .9. Okay. Yeah, 72.39. Now, I would divide by sum of W, but because I made my weights a decimal, I add up all of my weights, I would get one. I'm just divide by one, and there's seventy-two point three nine. If you had used your percentages and said seventy-two times twelve, you got eight hundred sixty-four through one thousand three hundred fifty, so one hundred and so on. You would just divide by a hundred in the end, right? Because you add up all of your weights, you get a hundred. Uh, so whatever you um, whatever you do there, just make sure you calculate that in. All right, questions on three. Let's take a look at four. Okay, um, mean high temperature for the problem number one there. Okay, so here's my same class and frequency, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to find the class midpoints. That's going to be my X. Because remember, the mean of a frequency distribution is sum of XF, this is from the formula sheet, uh, divided by N, right? Sum of your XFs divided by N. Here's my frequency. Here's my F. What's my X? Well, I'm going to kind of just put it right in here. I'm going to add a little column. Here's going to be my X's. And again, my X is going to be my midpoints of my class. Okay. So uh, 20 and 23 divided by 2. That gets me for 21 and a half. 21.5. Now, how much am I going up by with my classes? We're going up by fours. So I don't need to run those numbers each time. I'm just going to keep adding by four now. So this is 25 and a half. This is 29 and a half. This is 33 and a half. This is 37 and a half. This is 41 and a half. Okay. So now I take XS. I'm going to add on a new column here. Call that XF. And let's multiply. 21.5 times three, oh, no, sorry, 21.5 times five, excuse me, uh, 107.5. And then we have 25 and a half times three, 76.5. Uh, we've got 29 and a half times three, I'm going to keep doing a couple more, so I don't need to. 33 and a half times 3. 37 and a half times, okay, that was only 2. I'll bring these over real quick. No, oh, come on. Come on back. Please. Please come on over. Please come on over now. There it is. Okay, so we got 88 and a half. 100 and a half. And 75 
And then one times 41.5 is just 41.5. Okay, you can go in. All right, so now I'm going to add up all my XFs, which is 107.5. 76.5. Eighty-eight point five, a hundred point five, seventy-five, and forty-one point five. Let me just double check. One hundred seven point five, seventy-six point five, eighty-eight point five, hundred point five, seventy-five, and forty-one point five. A lot. Remember, a lot of statistics is doing things again and again and again without error, right? Which is difficult, right? It's not just about can you mentally do the problem, but can you do it without error as well? All right, got 489.5. That's my sum of my X's. XF's, excuse me, 489.5. And then I'm going to divide it by N. Well, what was my total frequency from above? 17, right? So now I divide that by 17, and I get 28.79, or 28.8, if you will. Um, now, does that logically make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's on the low side of this class. It's like falling right in there, right? And that makes sense because this five is kind of pulling that up, isn't it? It's pulling it up a little bit rather than keeping it right in the middle of that class. Cool. Questions about that? Okay, let's keep it rolling. Consider the following. <laughs> I don't know if there's an A in there. I think this was like, you know, like I entered down while I was numbering and it made an A. So, sorry, because there is an A in the data set. Calculate the mean, mean amount of the data set. Which choice would you likely give as your best measurement of central tendency? Well, let's first find the mean. 8, 8, 8, 10, 10, 10. Nope, 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 just two tens. Uh, we got a 10, 10, 12, excuse me. Uh, 14, 15, 17, 14, 15, 17, 14, 15, 17, uh, and then a 35. How many entries do I have? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 entries. Okay. So 13.75 X bar is 13.75. Ah, uh, yeah. X bar. The mean is 13.75. Right? Is that what you guys got? Yeah. I'm doing these just on the fly here. So. Uh, let's find the median. Nice. These are all in order already. Perfect. What's the median? 11. Yep, right in the middle of the two there. Median is equal to 11. And the mode looks like 8. Okay, what's the best measure of central tendency to use? Median. Why? There's an outlier. Yeah. You notice the 35 pulling the, it's skewing the data, right? It's skewing the data. So therefore, if, it, if there's an outlier skewing the data, the best one to use is the median. The, the mean is getting by that outlier. So use the median. All right. Stem and leaf plot and a dot plot. Okay. So look at my stems here. looks like we had a four, a five, and a six. So I'm going to say a four, a five, and a six here. Um, don't forget to put a key. Remember we talked about that. Don't forget to put a key. Let's just use the first one. Four, one is going to equal 41. Okay. Looks like we got one, two twos, three, four, eight, one, one, two, eight, five, or sorry, two, eight, nine. And then we got zero, one, two, two, three. Yeah. Okay, there's my stem and leaf plot again. Don't forget to put a key. Silly, but you got to make sure you do that. Let's make a quick dot plot. Okay, I'm going from 41 to 63. Um, let's go uh, by five. Let's go uh, 40. 45, 50, 55, 60. Yeah, sure. And then I'm going to 63. Right? 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. We'll put that. We'll put 65 right there. Okay. 
and we make a dot plot. I'll make it with red dots. A one, two twos, a one, two twos, um, a three. Ooh, I guess I should space it out a little bit more. A four, uh, an eight, 51, two 51s, a 52, 58, 59. Good turn the jumps there, doesn't it? Uh, 58, 59, 60, 61, two 62s, and a 63. Pretty simple, right? <clears throat> okay, any questions on six? Number seven. A car dealership wants a pie graph the amount of cars sold for each quarter. Uh, quarter one, 450. Quarter two, 685. Quarter three was 267. Quarter four, 975 car control. Construct a pie chart. Okay, Q1. Um, let's do Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Um, this was 450, 685. Oops, skipped Q3. 267 and 975. All right. So there's my data. I'm going to make a little table for myself. Um, there's my data. Let's figure out my percentages first, my relative frequencies, my RFs, if you will, my relative frequencies. Um, looks like I need to figure out my total. So 450, 685, 267, and 975 gets me. Oh, hold on, please. I forgot a plus sign. Insert. Oops. Okay, there we go. Much better. 2,377 cars. So 450 out of 2377 is 0.189. Uh, 685 out of 2377 is 20, yeah, 0.288. 267 out of 2377 is 0 0.011. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I was like, wait, that's way too small. <laughs> I got a little seven happy there. Oh, please. Oh, please. There we go. There we go. 11%. Let's just get that zero out of there. Eee, bee, bee, bee. Um, so that's going to get me 0.112. There we go. 11.2%. Uh, and then 975. 975 out of 2377 is 0 0.41. 0 0.410. Okay, next thing, next column I need to make is the degrees, right? is the degrees of the circle that I need. So I'm going to apply each one of those by 360. So 0.189 times 360, and then 0 0.288 times 360, 0 0.112 times 360, 0.41 times 360. I hope I didn't make any mistakes when I was pulling that there. I'm faster than my calculator can go. Okay, we got 68. We'll go round it to the nearest degree. 68 degrees, 104 degrees. Is that right? Yeah, 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 because it's more than 90. Uh, 40 degrees, and then 148 degrees. Cool. Let's make my pie chart. Okay. Um, 68 degrees. That's Q1. Okay, something like there. Um, that's Q1 with 60, or no, uh, we'll say 18.9%. 18.9% of the data. And then let's put it in a different color. Uh, Q2 is going to be 104 degrees. So let's go just a little bit past 90 there. We'll go like right there. So there's Q2 with 28.8% of my data. And then we'll pick it down the color. We'll pick green here and go 40 degrees. Actually, let's do 150. Yeah. So here's like, here's 180 if I were to just draw that line straight across. So there's like 30 degrees below that. There we go. 
Um, this is Q4 with 41% uh, of my data. And then there's this must be Q3. So we'll say Q3 with 11.2%. Um, Q1 and Q3 look misshapen, but that's okay. I think I made Q1 look more like 45 degrees. But again, if I see, as long as I see all the necessary information in there, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very lenient on your drawing. Okay. Right, as long as this table is there, you're good. That's what I need to see. Draw an example of each data set that is skewed left, skewed right, and a and symmetric. Okay, skewed left, skewed right, and then symmetric. Symmetric is easiest to do. Okay, so let's draw symmetric. Perfect bell shape, right? Where is the mean, median, and mode? Right down the center, right? Mean, median, and the mode right down the center. Now remember, skewed left means the tail is to the left. Long tail to the left, bump on the right. right? Skewed right, or it's the opposite. The tail is on the right. And bump, tail. Right? Okay, now think about the outlier pulling the mean. Right? So this is the mean. This is the median. Highest point is the mode. Right? Mean's getting pulled toward the tail. So flip that, this is the mode, most. The median would be somewhere in here on skewed right, and then the mean, oops, sorry for my poor handwriting there, is a little bit pulled, pulled further to the right. With two minutes to spare. I'm gonna stop my video real quick.